welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 186. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. First uh, catchphrase thingy that Norman made me came up with. <laughs> and also joining us today is Ro. Hello. <laughs> and our guest host for this week is Hypermark. Yo, Doug, I heard you like podcasts with reoccurring guests. So we got ourselves a reincurring guest. That is me. So how are you guys doing, man? Well, I'm doing all righty. Having an all right day. I know, you know, it's weird. How so? Ah, uh, doing a lot of things, you know. For a moment, I wasn't even going to join the. Uh, I wasn't even going to join the podcast, but I decided to change my mind in the end. Oh my, what happened? But in the end, it uh, doesn't even matter. <laughs> no! <laughs> I guess, I guess company feeling lonely. It's oh, really? absolutely, it's absolutely empty around here. Like I'm home alone completely. I was home alone last week. Lucky, I want to be home alone. I love uh, that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but not the NES game, man. Like that game sucks. It wasn't that bad. Have you don't, played don't it? mention bad games. Yes. You remember what happens when we mention, mention oh, bad games? Oh, oh no, we don't talk about that one game. Oh, it's not a bad game. Come on, don't be a scrub. Uh, <laughs> it's like Dark Souls, only for kiddies. Nope, nope, nope. We're, we're talking about another game, man. Back then. We're talking about anyway. another game, man. <laughs> another game? Yeah, the, the the last game we mentioned when Mark was on, it killed everyone's Skype. <laughs> Oh, right, we're talking about that game. I was talking uh, about the Home Alone game for the Nintendo Entertainment System back in the 90s. Yeah, I've, I've seen the Angry Video Game Nerd play that game. It's not fun. I enjoyed it. That guy's a scrub. Oh, sorry. Moving Home, Alone, uh, Home Alone 2. Home Alone 2. That was okay. Oh, wow, you have bad taste in video games. But anyway... I'm not a scrub. <laughs> I'm like, somebody! <laughs> Moving on swiftly. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so I'm guessing you're doing well, Ro? Yes, I have found the best Steam group of all. <laughs> okay. Waifu Hunters. What? Waifu oh, Hunters. Seen I've seen that yep. group around before. Could you explain to me what's that group of? Because it sounds weird. It's about waifus. You know, okay. waifus. And, and, waifus and, and promoting and waifus. games with waifus in it. Oh, so basically, if there's a game that you can consider it as a waifu, it's in that group? Yes, and much, much more. So, Mark, how are you doing, man? It's been a while. I've been doing really well. Yesterday, I had made a story post update, and I'm proud of myself because I posted something that's of significance. Yay. So, how many questions came out of that one? Uh, well, I haven't really got any questions. Not that I don't mind because I have like over a hundred some in my inbox anyways. Oh, all right, all right. But still, it's good to have more, you know, like, get them yeah. coming, get them... I mean, honestly, I already have some questions that I need to answer some, like, things in the background story and whatnot. But they're really old ones that I had yet to answer till now. Oh, wow. Does that spoil the tempo of the whole story? <laughs> Does it spoil you? No? Nah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Alrighty then. But anyway... Uh, since we don't have a guest for this week, this is going to be one of those uh, quick round shows where we just derp around and talk a lot. That means the episode is going to last seven hours because I'm here. And, and we're going to go on tangents about the gaming industry and how we use Superior along yeah. with this gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go to that, you guys know about uh, Interplay and their line of products? Uh, I don't follow anything along those lines. You're no. talking about the card game. Well, the company that does the card game, but before that, they did uh, they did the collectible trading card games and also the dog tags. Yeah, well, did they? Uh huh. Huh. Okay. They're the same company that did it, and you know what? I, I do like I do enjoy the dog tags. The dog tags are special to me for some reason, because the first time I got it was at Buck. And me and your friend, uh, Nick, we were hunting dog tags and we were just buying them just to get the really rare ones. Yeah. yeah. I remember Nick went crazy getting the rarity one. <laughs> uh, he eventually got a derpy and he, I got a Luna. So, yay. 
Hmm. I'd like me a Celestial one, if oh, I could wow. ever buy one. Uh, well, is it, Interplay is available in the States, so I'm sure you can get it easily. Maybe Toys R Us or Walmart. Target, probably. I don't know, depending on where is your location at. You guys have it more available than us here. I, I swear, it's so difficult to get any kind of merchandise uh, over here. It's like a third world country in that regard. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I am a third world country. <laughs> uh, you, 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 alone, is... you alone, Ro, 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 Ro is a third world country now. Ro is yes. like officially a country in a person. <laughs> yes, I declare to be a sovereign nation. <laughs> when you need help, you need relief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm just curious. Why are they still called dog tags? Why can't they be called pony tags? That would be a thing more catch here. Uh, I, I think it's just labeling. I don't know. It, well, I mean, in the, in the military, those things are called dog tags, and that they're like not, widely. No, it's a whole stick. <laughs> this whole thing. Well, I mean, it's just like it's a it's a widely known thing to be mm-hmm. calling them dog tags and whatnot. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's acceptable that way. But still, we they, they're selling the series two dog tags now. And apparently in those tags, there are new designs and whatnot. And, well, it seems that they're doing something new with the whole thing, that you get the standard shape dog tags and the special shape dog tags. And the special shapes are, well, basically muffin-shaped derpies, um, portrait images of your favorite characters and whatnot, and a few bunch of other stuff, like those tattoos, sticker cards and whatnot. So, is this going to be cool? Yeah, that is pretty neat. Huh? Or metal? Mm, I don't know. I think it could be high quality plastic. I th- to what it looks like from some of the preview images, some of them look metallic. I guess you can choose between plastic or metallic depending on how much you want to pay. Mm, I don't think so. It's all random. It's like one of those trading things. Which is why I like going and buying this at conventions because you go at the store, you buy stuff and you, if a person asks, hey, do you want to trade that for this one? And if you really want the one that guy has, you can trade it off. So it's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I like the trading community. It's fun. This is like TF2 all over again. <laughs> what, with hats? Yeah, and, and especially with a new update, freaking trading those guns with the special skins and whatnot. Do they do anything? Well, no. they're just skins. They look different. Mm-hmm. They, they look, look different. different. They don't do any. They don't make the the weapon more powerful. They don't make it shoot different. They don't. <sighs> it's all aesthetic. It's not functionality. Well, James, as an artist, you could probably understand, right? I know that I I appreciate that there is a business behind it. I just think it's a completely pointless one. I mean, well, okay, you good. That, to impress, you know. it, it, it is good that they are giving graphic designers the opportunity to put their designs on something, and it is good that they are actually charging, the, paying them for that, that. That's good too. But when it comes to video games and gameplay and all that, it's like a video game is all about how you play with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can only try so many different rare skins until you realize that the weapon is doing all, always the exact same thing. It just it just looks a slightly different color. Or it has well, a, de- a decal that it, that it has different... That's sh- not a word! It's not like in Borderlands, where you can get a new gun, and it can do something completely... Maybe this one will shoot lightning, or this one will shoot red projectiles that explodes in a cloud of green smoke, or whatever. It's 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 not like that. It well, doesn't do that. Is- the thing is, though, they they go in intentionally knowing that it's supposed to be like that, where it's just all aesthetic and no functionality, aside from being the gun that it's meant to be. And, you know, they're just basically capitalizing on the success that CSGO has with their weapon skins, and they're just putting it on TF2 so they can make more moolah. And because we all know, as much as Valve likes to do good things for the community, they also like to make as much moolah as possible. Oh, and sure. Of course they, they want to do that. Yeah. to feed. <laughs> yeah, and that's why they also have uh they, they they also allow the community to build their own uh their own items and all that the different the different hats. I think there was a competition to see who can come up with a good hat design and the winner will be included in the gallery and they will give him uh a part of the revenue of when whenever the hat gets sold or something like that. I I think that's good. That's that's a way to find new talent out there, but it's I don't know. Does anybody remember Team Fortress One? 
<laughs> I do. They no, mean it's Team like Fortress a very long Classic. Time ago. Yeah. It's 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 like with Street Fighter 2. Is like who here has played Street Fighter 1? Or who I here have... even cares about Street Fighter 1? Yeah, and it's a piece of That's not a word. Isn't it? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, it, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. It's I'm pretty sure Team Fortress 1 is all right, but everybody went crazy with TF2. I mean, it's the <sighs> I think it goes the same and way as, as TF2. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, technically TF2 wasn't even Valve's game, it was just a mod. Just like the same way Counter-Strike was a mod before Counter-Strike Source came out. And Portal 2. Portal 1 was made by Valve. Portal 1 was made by Valve, then they made, uh, there were a bunch of mods and uh, reskins of Portal 1 that uh, I think Valve included on in the 360 version of the game. They included some maps made by the community. And then they made Portal 2 based on that, or I, they wanted to like. I don't remember there being mo- like custom made maps available from the Xbox because I uh, had the yes, Xbox the, version. The of, uh, do you uh, have the one that came on the orange box or the one that is downloadable? I had the downloadable. The downloadable has ten extra maps that are like challenges. I don't remember that at all. It does. Like, it, I, it does. It does. There is there, there is even an achievement dedicated to those maps. Mm, must have been an update that I never had or something, because like I, I seriously that... don't, I seriously don't remember that. I I remember buying Portal Portal the first one on my Xbox and whatnot, and you know it was just the main game with the course, and then the challenge courses were like just the main game mat, le- levels and all that. I don't remember there being the custom ones that came from the community. The version of the game was called Portal Still Life, and it came with ten extra maps that you could just uh, do on your own time. Didn't belong to the story, didn't add anything to the story. They were just something that they threw in as an extra. I don't remember if they took them directly from the community or if they designed them based on the community, but I know that they used those maps to like follow up on Portal 2. And also, they made Portal 2 just to, you know, they were milking the... I mean, the unexpected cash cow they got with Portal 1. You, you remember that Portal 1 came as an extra on the Orange Box, the, uh, on the Orange Box c- CD, and it, it was just that. It's like, okay, we, and th- we threw this here just because. And it exploded in popularity. Well, I don't mind having there being a Portal 2. I guess my only big problem with Portal 2 was the first, uh, one sixth of the game, which was basically the first game, but with a new coat of skin, being all old looking and stuff like that, I'm like, man, can the game pick up already? And then like after an hour, and then the game finally picks up, which I it's find a way really to, annoying. It's a way to to get you back into the game. It's also a way to get new people that were not playing the first Portal into the game because I'm pretty sure not everybody played the first Portal, despite I, how popular it was. I understand that, but sometimes I just wish that they would include an option to skip that or, like, have, like, one of those things where, like, they give you, like, one test to prove if you already know your portal skills and then you can move on to the the part where it starts to pick up and all that. Because, I mean, even after I haven't played Portal 1 in a while, I still knew most of my portal tricks, so, like, it was kind of just frustrating to, like, go into a room and instantly know what you have to do. (laughs) Yeah. I never had a problem with that. Because it's giving me more bang for my buck, you know, it's like, oh, I paid 10 euros for this game, uh, oh, no, I didn't pay that for Portal 2, I think, 30, I paid 30 euros for this game, it's giving me 20 hours of gameplay, 10 hours on the single player, 10 hours on the multiplayer, yeah, good, that's that's good value, that's a slightly, uh, a little bit over 1 euro per hour, that's a bargain, hell, going to a movie is more expensive than that, and so... It's one of those situations where... Valve saw that this game was popular and people were asking for more and they delivered. I, I don't mind really because when you think about it, people are now asking for Portal 3. People are not asking for Portal 3 because they are, everybody's asking for Half-Life Episode 3. Oh, t- nobody, yeah. nobody wants Team Fortress 2, no, nobody wants Team Fortress 3, nobody wants Portal 3. People oh. want to continue the story of Gordon Freeman and it's never, never going to happen. It's not going to yeah. happen. You know the ironic thing? I think half, I mean, not Half-Life, uh, uh, Left 4 Dead 3 has been confirmed, I think, because... Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. I don't think it's going to happen either. I will tell you why. The hype and the anticipation is not going to be worth it. It's the same reason why Duke Nukem Forever should have never been made. 
It's because wa waiting for years, waiting for like, we have been waiting for over a decade already on Half-Life Episode 3 to come out. It's gotten to a point where it's not worth it. Where no. people have moved on. Those people who have, yeah. these people have played, I mean, during the time that we have been waiting for Half-Life Episode 3, we have had all of the Assassin's Creed video games, all of the Hobbit movies been released, every season of TV shows like Hannibal, Friendship is Magic, Game of Thrones, House of Cards, Gravity Falls, Steven Universe, and Adventure Time, among many others. We have had so many different movies, video games, comic book series, Star Wars has been rebooted. <laughs> no! You well, cannot... People move on. People no, drop that... People that people, people People drop that... Pa yeah, but the people that dro don't drop that passion, they have the... Okay, with all due respect, you have your head full of birds, and you think that the game is going to have all these different things that you're really going to enjoy and that you're really going to like. The game is going to come out, and it's not going to have them. And what are you going to do? You're going to get PC. You're going to get angry. Oh, well, obviously. And Valve is going to say... Uh, we shouldn't have finished this game. It's not worth it. Everybody's no, hating it. No, no, no. I, I don't agree with you there because here's the thing. When with Duke Nukem, the problem with that one is they change a lot of things. They change engines. They change platforms. They change a lot of things. Even they change developers. When they went to uh, who was the last publisher for Duke Nukem Forever? I think I it was think. Gearbox. Yeah. When they Gearbox, went to Gearbox, yes. yeah. When they went to Gearbox, Gearbox had. Like what? What is this? This is a mess, and they had to work with what they had. God bless their souls for that, and least finishing it. But still, it's something. With Valve, they never promise anything. They just say that we're working on it. It's done when it's done. Well, I think what's really happening though is that they're waiting for the right time to release it because. Uh, when you really think about it, both the Half-Life games, excluding the DLC episodes, mm -hmm. came out at a time where it did something revolutionary for the in-game industry. Mm. The first Half-Life came out around the time when not many other game narratives strived for somewhat of a more cinematic approach to it. Half-Life was the first of its kind. Half-Life 2 became revolutionary because of the fact of its facial animations, the, the animations with the body language, and all the other neat stuff like the world physics, uh, applying to practical gameplay purposes. That was pretty revolutionary for its time. Mm -hmm. what, it, what will Half-Life 3 have that no other game has at this point. That's a very good point. Please continue because I want to suggest, I want to plan, uh, make a question to all of you, but please finish your thought. Um, well, there's a few theories rolling around, and one I particularly agree with is the fact that they're waiting for VR to become a popular thing oh. so they can release the game on that, and it'll do something revolutionary with that because I pretty much every game has used everything possible within the PC's limit today. Like, you can't really do much else. And I'm not saying you can't be creative with whatever you got, but what I'm saying is in terms of, like, new technology to show off new possibilities, we pretty much explored everything. Yeah. I completely agree with you there, Mark. True, true. I, I do agree with that. But, I, okay, here's the thing. We're not a gaming podcast per se. We do enjoy games, and with well, with the pony news kind of slow and... I'm not really talking about out. video games here, I'm talking about businesses. Yeah, and what Valve is doing is... <laughs> as, they, they are being sound. They are being smart. Yeah, they are I mean, like, sure. we are not going to take the risk of... Except releasing for this when... Game and... They weren't Go being ahead. smart when they made mods payable. No, that one, like the payable mods, that came down really fast, was it? Um, They announced it on Thursday... And by and Monday, by Sunday, <laughs> by Sunday, now you gave to make a formal apology. Yeah, that uh, was something that happened. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, but uh, hang on a minute, Ro, What are you? Oh my, going uh, over there? Sweet Sunday, French fry on the Wednesday afternoon. All this talk about business getting done, but, but no one has thought about the cake is still alive. <laughs> Am I the only one concerned about this? <laughs> I also, I think really? you should forget about that meme because I think it's the most redundant one along with an uh, arrow in the knee. You, you know, Ro, I didn't want to murder you before starting the podcast. Now I think I want to kill you with a knife. <laughs> you go you go and bring out that meme. The worst part about that meme is that every time I talk about cake or I'm about to eat it, some freaking jerk face has to go and go, Oh, the cake's alive. <laughs> oh, like, love of God. Just swear oh, like a well. grown up. Don't, don't, you know, don't go. They're talking cake about... Talking about memes, um, Discord, <laughs> the dog tag has Discord, and talking about Discord, 
it seems that John Delancey might have leaked a few things for season oh, yeah. six. Oh yeah, we're talking about My Little Pony. That's oh, right. Yeah. I yeah. forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, the big on FBS show. It stands for brownie. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, we forget about that every now and then. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah, then John Delancey did open his mouth on Twitter a little bit too much, and apparently there are two episodes coming out on season six. Uh, I don't think that's a bad thing in terms of JDL. Uh, hold on, I got a question. Mm-hmm. How do they jump to the conclusion that th- this is going to be season six and well, not well, season the fact five that, is done? The fact that season five has already done uh, recording and mm-hmm. they are now recording season six. They are like uh, in the process of recording it. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. I don't really follow that for the sake of like keeping myself in the dark about the episodes and enjoying yeah. them as much as possible. So, <laughs> oh boy, you're in the wrong podcast. Then get out. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> No, but honestly speaking, like... Nicole uh, Kidman is a ghost and Rosebud is the sled. Like, but honestly speaking, is this really a spoiler or is this really, really something, a big revelation? You know, this is... This is Not as hyping. much as iTunes did with their episodes. This oh. is hyping in the right way. <laughs> We're giving you the enough amount of information just so you know that some is in this way. And hey, having John Delancey still in the show, the guy that came in to just do the job for like two episodes and then leave, mm-hmm. and he keeps coming back. What? A, what? How joyous! True. That's so joyous. Please, more. I Discord. think he just enjoyed his role, and that's a good thing. Well, I, I think what made him popular within the fandom was people love the character Discord. And here's the thing: most bronies are young adults. So, there's going to be those Venn diagrams of people who watch Star Trek. I think the reason why John Delancey keeps coming... Because, uh, I mean, he he could have said no. He could have said no right away and not coming back. But I remember that when John Delancey left Star Trek The Next Generation, one of the reasons why he decided to leave and never come back as Q is because he wanted people to remember Q as an uh, eternal being, always on the same age. He didn't want people to see Q growing older. Mm -hmm. And I think that with Discord, John Delancey has managed to find a way to channel all of that Q-esque personality that belongs in him because he's he's very much like Q, Mm -hmm. according Mm -hmm. to what people talk about and and anecdotes that happen at conventions. So I think that with Discord, he found a way to channel all of that that personality that he has yet to uh, get out. So I think... He keeps coming back because he really enjoys uh, being Discord. Exactly and like you said. And that's the magic of voice acting. You don't have to rely on your face. You can just rely on your voice. Talking about your voice, like, I recently saw a, a new game that's going to be coming out soon. Transformers Devastator. Oh, and Devastation. Devastation. And Peter Cullen is in that game. Yes, yes. Oh, oh my God. That is the best part of any Transformers movie. Like, I don't care if Michael Bay is directing it. They have Peter Cullen voicing Optimus Prime. It's going to be good. Yeah, man. Like, having yeah. him voice Optimus is just... Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Like, am I the only one and James geeking out about this? Because... Yes. <laughs> you... A... No, you don't understand. They have ditched the designs of the Transformers movies, which I, fi- I find it okay, but it gets older after a while. And they are using the ones from G1! Except like, Mumblebee. But well, Mumblebee, when he transforms into a robot, he still looks like Mumblebee. It's so cool. You ever say Mark? I was just going to say, I don't really care about Transformers at all. <gasps> I just, gosh, I'm fine with that. <laughs> uh, I, honestly, a lot of like stuff like that, even with Power Rangers, I never cared about Power Rangers as a kid. I didn't care mm-hmm. about Transformers. The only thing I really liked as a kid was Legos, and that was literally it. <laughs> hey, dude, that's fine. I mean, I was like... like at least you had you had that uh, that part of childhood. <laughs> yeah, because I remember all my my family cousins and my friends were all like, "Oh, Transformers, Yu Gi Oh, Pokemon, mm-hmm. yeah!" And I'm just like, "I'm gonna play with my Legos." <laughs> how how old are you again, Mark? I'm 19. 19. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Well, you know what? I I'm gonna tell you one thing. Uh, when you were when you were young, they were airing the bad versions of the of these shows like they were airing the the mediocre version of transformers not the g1 the the ones that it was like uh beast wars 
Uh, well, Mighty stuff. Morphin, which was considered to be the good Power Rangers, was uh, around during my time. So, uh, my, my, mean... Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was very bad because it was the well, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was you know, it was chopped off from a origin from a, from a Super uh, Sentai they TV show from Japan. Yeah, they, they do that. Uh, yeah, of course they still do that. Um, God, was I the only? Uh, I think I was the only guy lucky enough to actually have the original Super Sentai show in my <laughs> because we got it straight from Japan. Oh, we didn't wow. get the American version, no. so we got all the ones with the the butt wiggling and this no, crotch grabbing and all that. <laughs> no, here's here's the thing, James. That okay, Sen- Super Sentai is okay. It has its own storyline. What you don't understand about Power Rangers is it's insane. The the storyline. No, I understand. Can... <laughs> I understand so well. I know. It's nuts. Mm-hmm. At one point, there is one episode where they end up finding the Triforce from Zelda to fly, to, to, to rescue their families. Yes! Oh, that God. happens! They find the, 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 the Legend of Zelda Triforce. Mm, interesting. It's insane. It may, and it makes no sense. And it is super romanticized. But if you're into that kind of stuff, it is really fun. But it's, it's an acquired taste. It's an acquired taste. Not everybody that was way back when, during the age of silly things. Like, uh, like Angel Grove, uh, <laughs> Angel Grove's insurance rate has got to be high. That's mm. all I can say. Yes, it is. <laughs> and they have a lot of... The, the 90s, <laughs> you, you know what? The 90s are to the 2000s, what the 70s were to the 80s. Oh, wow. I, I, was, I was thinking about it the other day. The, I think people complain, oh, the, the 90s were so terrible when compared to the 80s. And I'm like, yeah, people from the 80s say the same about the 70s. <laughs> it's like every so decade we have <sighs> rise in quality entertainment and then a downfall on quality entertainment. So <laughs> watch out for the 2020s. Those are going to be rough. Oh, wow. But still, but still. With John Delancey here, wow, how did we jump ship way fast <laughs> I am here, here. I'm here <laughs> I, I'm just happy that we have John here coming back reprising his role as Discord and well it's cool I don't it, think it we could really have it any other way I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure they would just not have the Discord episodes at all if they didn't have him you know what there's a way there's a way they could just make him younger and change his voice no, just, he'll just change his, like he'll change to a baby form, and they'll just have some female voice actor be a baby version of him. True that. that could no, happen. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do baby Discord. That would be so ridiculous. Oh God, please! I hope that is. I hope those episodes coming on season six are not one of those. Mm. I, I just get. I just planted the seed in the writer's head. <laughs> You uh. incepted! Oh god, I'm gonna have to kill you now. Uh. <laughs> the MBS show does not. <laughs> What's the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, writers don't take seeds. Writers don't take this too seriously. Ignore, ignore. Nobody, her. nobody watches us, Norman. It's okay. So, guys, have you seen the new Equestria Girls movie? What was it? Friendship Games? No, no I, I've been having a hard time trying to find a, a link to watch it. Really now, but anyway. Rainbow, I keep saying Rainbow Rocks. There's you keep saying catchy. Rainbow Rocks because you're t- you're silly. No, it's catchy. Rainbow Rocks is catchy. Friendship Game is really hard. But anyway, Friendship Games, it's out. People love it. And apparently, someone as Ish Rudell, I think he was the director for the Equestrian Games or whatever it is called. I'm EQG3. Yeah, let's go with that. Someone asked, uh... Are they, uh, are there any chances we might get more Equestrial Girl media of any kind? I still have a lot of questions. And mm. he responded with, yep, there's a pretty good chance. Ellipses. Ellipses. Uh, well, remember a couple of months ago, like a year ago, they said uh-huh. they were making a spin-off series based on Equestrial Girls. Mm-hmm, I do remember that. And, okay, if you guys remember in the Hasbro 2006 Entertainment Plan, uh, they mentioned that there's going to be plus season 6, so I'm guessing that's going to be season 6, and a few other things. And in that um, press release, they say that Equestria Girls, Legend of Everfree, that's one of their other projects. So... That's gonna be interesting. 
In all honesty, though, I'm pretty indifferent about the Equestria Girls series continuing. Like, mm-hmm. I'm glad that they're increasing in quality because I've seen Rainbow Rocks, and that was definitely better than the first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, and if, if the third one is uh, any indication of it in growing quality, then I don't really mind so much. I guess my only problem would be that they would take it too far. How, what do you mean by too far? Like, um, say for example. They they wrap up like this like trilogy or whatever mm-hmm. or something along those lines and then Hasbro's all like yo dog this this stuff is making us the moolah just like make more please and then they're just like crap now we need a narrative excuse to continue this and then they're just gonna have to pull stuff out of that's not a word and then just like I don't know I feel like just that's gonna happen we're like they they're gonna have to force something contrive a nar- narrative plot point and just to keep it going and stuff like that. Well, you haven't watched the the third movie. I can yeah. tell you that they don't need to force anything after the end. They leave it. They they, they close it, but then it, they also leave it open enough to uh to to continue the story where they left it. But I do agree with with your fears there, Mark. That with the hype that people have for it, people want more. And well, here's the thing: we as fans don't know what we want. <laughs> Ha! Yeah. ha that you is definitely and every true. fandom in the planet, Norman. I will definitely agree that we don't know what we want. I just like my philosophy behind be, being in a fan base and stuff like that is, of course, I don't know what I want. As long as like what I get is good, I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. And but here's the other thing. Also, when it comes to what we will get, is um, big companies like Hasbro do market research. With market research, is a control kind of environment where they select a few groups and they have probably scouters scouting the internet. And right now, if they're smart, they will push along Sunset Shimmer and see what her story is and so on. But beyond that point, to me, what I think was special about Equestria Girls in general is the world itself and how rare it is because... We have the main ponies in the in Equestria. We have that storyline there. So that's going to be fun. And when we get little tidbits of the human world or the other dimension, that's what makes us want more. We clamor for it. We find shorts. We find a lot of things. But if they're just going to give it to us on a silver platter every week, wouldn't the mystic be kind of gone? You know no, I mean? not 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 really. I don't think so, man. In all honesty, I'm kind of surprised people are actually hyped about Equestria Girls now because I remember when the first two came out. <laughs> the first one was like, "Ah, oh, get this stuff out of my face," and the second one was like, "Yeah, that was actually pretty good." And now the third one, apparently everyone's hyping over this, and I'm just like, "Huh, interesting." Well, I guess keep beating somebody over the head long enough, they will start begging you to keep beating them because they start liking it. It's like you have all movies; it's the same process. You know, oh, yeah. to go back to what you were saying before, the person that is doing the charts and saying, oh, this is what the internet likes, we should keep doing more of this because internet internet gives it likes. We have a thousand thirty something likes on Facebook, everybody's giving us a thumbs up. Uh, yes, that can only get you so far. Yes, it's gonna give you money, it's gonna give you quick money, but what easy comes, easy goes. You cannot just rely on the popularity contest. You need to base some sort of quality on it. Also do things differently. I don't know. Here's the problem with most shows like that. You go to a point where it's high school drama, high school life. I'm sure that the writers for MLP can make it better, make it awesome. But how far can you go? Oh, uh, you, you have no idea. How many seasons does Saved by the Bell have? Well, but have you noticed that it's basically the same routine. The advantage they have with using this high school setting is that they have this a uh, bit of a fantasy element to it, and that's what's keeping it fresh and interesting because they don't rely on the high school tropes, at least uh, as far as I'm aware, mm. um, and they use more of the fantasy elements just they happen to be in high school. Same thing with like the Persona games, uh, particularly 3 and 4, because that's the one everyone knows the most. Kimachirama-sama, I love you! <laughs> you I mean, are reading my mind, because I did mention Persona 4 on the review of Equestria Girls that we made. Rainbow Rock. No, yeah, right, no, Equestria Girls, the first one. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, right. I didn't mention Persona 4 on, on Rainbow Rocks that I remember. 
I did mention it on the first Equestria Girls movie. It's very much like that. Yeah, and the, the reason why Persona 3 and 4 worked so well, despite being a typical high school setting like any other anime, was because they had this fantasy element to it where there were shadows lurking and, you know, you had to make friends to make yourself stronger because when you bring yourself closer to other people, you make yourself, you bring yourself closer to the truth of the entire story. And so, not only do you have some high school drama, but it's interesting type of high school drama intertwined with a bit of the fantasy element to mix things up. And that's yeah. what the advantage they have there with that. So An investigation, building the relationships between the characters. It is it, it, the first Equestria Girls movie is very much that. If they continue um, that on the TV show, like you're saying, that would be great. Yeah, and so that's the only advantage that I can see right now that Equestria Girls has is the the, the normal setting with a bit of a fantasy element to it. Probably, I'm not hundred percent sure what to say about it because, well. There's a certain situation where how many times can you really tell a story with a new swing to it? Because right oh, now... Oh, dude, look at any movie that has come out in the last 30 years. Yeah, I mean, true that, but here's the thing. With this one, with Equestria Girls specifically, what's selling or what people are adoring is sunset. Everybody loves the sunset. People are saying new waifu and whatnot. So, yeah, that's what's rocking for now. You're worried about that? I'm going to tell you this. The highest grossing movie of all time right now, it's a crossover between The Smurfs, Dances with Wolves, Pocahontas, and The Matrix. It's titled Avatar, directed by James Cameron, released in 2009. It made almost $3 billion in the box office. It's the same story that has been told endless almost times. Sometimes. Yes, I do understand but it, that. But it has a different approach to it. And that's what brings people to the to the to the whole thing. This is similar. True, Dad. I mean, probably I'm wrong when uh, it comes out and it's going to be awesome. But the fear is that when we get a series, like right now we're getting a movie, so movies are awesome. Yay! We get uh, an hour and a half of uh, Equestria Girls fun, a lot of good music. And with this one, what I'm fearing is that it's going to be overdone really fast. I can see where Norman's coming from with that because they're they're keeping all the good stuff in the movies, but then what's left for the show or the the spinoff show? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I will tell you this: the spin and this is going to be dire. The spinoff show is going to end up turning into a di- direct to DVD TV show that is going to be like five minutes long each ep- each episode, and they're going to sell it with the toys. Uh, probably, I yeah. Can't blame David. Think about think about that because that's. More or less where uh, where My Little Pony was before Lauren Faust picked it up, yeah, but where the movies were coming out on DVD and they were going straight to DVD al- al- along with the uh, with the actual toys they were selling. But the point for that one was the toys were well they were selling the toys and the DVDs were bonus. With this one now, if they but were, it's the that, same. Well, kind of, but if they were to do that, they would be losing a bit more because they could just put that out to or just rent it out to TV stations who wants to get more views in their stations. So I think it would be a better business plan if they were to put it you on know, TV. To paraphrase Kevin Klein in the movie Fierce Creatures, Jurassic Park made half of its profit selling plastic dinosaurs. That's very much how Hasbro works. They make the money, they make their profit with plastic horses and plastic robots. Mm-hmm. And plastic thing. They they sell toys. The DVD is the TV show. That is a nice bonus that adds to the revenue. But they are most primarily a toy company. They don't necessarily need to put a lot of effort on a, on a TV show or a movie. They are not aiming to win an Emmy or win an Oscar. They just want to sell toys. And, and the TV the show is a, the... side, is a side show. And to put to put it this in perspective, the the Brony fandom as it is was merely a fluke in terms of like expected success. Like no one expected us to come around and be all like, "Yeah, we like these color candied horses now," and <laughs> they certainly did not expect us to buy their merch. And now that that's happening, and they're all like, "Oh, okay, so this is weird, but it's making us money, so we'll just go with it." <laughs> mm, true. That's I mean... why Equestria Girl exists. I mean, but here's the thing also with what Mark said. We as a fandom, we like it so much that we keep buying their products. So if they were to quote unquote 
do what you just said, James, by selling the toys on the DVDs. Do you, okay, probably some of us will do it, but I'm sure as hell not going to do it because I don't want to equestrian girl doll in my house not because I don't <laughs> not because I don't <laughs> like it <laughs> wait until you're begging your parents dad can I get a sunset shimmer doll no, 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 now no, son no, you're 30 no. something years old come on grow no, up not, not because that I don't not because I don't like okay here's the thing the dolls are not that good like seriously they're not worth it but they're improving <laughs> they're improving now they have feet before they end on peg legs Honestly I remember speaking, uh, looking at the very first incarnations of those dolls and Jesus, they look pretty creepy. <laughs> Honestly, they don't. Face wise, they they, they, can, uh, they don't look all much better now. Face wise, but at least they have full bodies. Well, like before, they though, they literally did the leg ended at the knee. They didn't have anything beyond the knee. Honestly speaking, James, you, you, you no matter how you try to spin it, spin and sell the product at me, I won't buy it because and it's... yet, and yet, it managed to outsell Monster High during the Christmas of 2013. Well, here's the thing: because of the hype for the movie, the toys, the kids, the okay, yeah, here's the thing. and every single brony that has the entire collection in their house, you Actually, know that. <coughs> yeah, probably. But and with thing, brony, we're... I mean both male and female. I, yeah. I, I, I don't mean just the guys. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing, also that I need to point out, or I just need to state that true that bronies we consider ourselves as 18 and higher but there was uh there are those um 18 and lower bronies i remember going to a mall and this kid i think about seven or eight she just noticed a rainbow dash pony like oh yeah i want that daddy go get me go get it for me something like that and it was Kind of heartwarming to see, like, oh, yay, target audience getting what they want. Yay, that's good. I'm just I, looking for something else. <laughs> I, just to add to that, the, people seem to forget that the, the, the original target audience doesn't exist anymore, but they are <laughs> so dead wrong because I've met mm. so many 10 and 12 year olds on the internet who are bronies but happen to be really good artists as well. It's just really embarrassing when they're all like, hey, you want to talk on Skype? And I'm all like, sure. I'm assuming they're like 16 or something at the youngest. Then they're freaking 12. I'm like, this uh, is yeah. really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? And, that is a very wrong assumption. Anybody who makes the assumption that the target audience doesn't exist anymore, if they didn't exist anymore, we wouldn't have a show because they are the ones buying the toys. Mostly. Yes, that they are wrong because then without the target demographic, the show wouldn't wouldn't be there anymore. It, it would have ended in season three if oh, it wasn't why? because of all the people that buy the toys. Hmm, true that, true that. But still, as a fandom, I'm surprised that we are still going on and the show is going strong and people are wanting more. I remember, re- like back, this was back in season, like when season one ended. I read the fanfic Milo Dashi, and there was one part where. The main character says that the show went on for like eight seasons, and at first I honestly doubted that. I thought it was going to be like four seasons tops, and here we are in season five. Season six is confirmed, and I'm all like, man, if it's going to like pass season eight, I'm going to like flip a table so hard. Not because I'm mad that it keeps going, but just like like the fact that it's even going to begin with. No, that, mad, mad because Firefly only got 13 episodes and My Little Pony got over 100. Everybody is like, <laughs> shaking their fist. I'm shaking their fist. You cannot, you cannot say that. But, oh. no, it, it, it is true is that if it wasn't for that, it would have ended in, in season three. Hasbro commissioned up until season three. They didn't commission more. That's why they stopped at 13 episodes because it's the limit to any TV show before it goes syndicate. It, it's surprising that this show keeps going on and, the f- the quality in well story the quality in animation has increased and yes. the quality in the fandom has increased also we got a lot of great artists we got a lot of great musicians we also get a lot of great reviewers now so great animators is- great animators true, true that I, uh, who was it i think it was ac Racebest or one of those guys that does the the the, the pony reaction videos mm-hmm. uh, he said it it's getting to the point where the animations in this fandom are getting so good we could get nominated to an academy award and it is true. Have you seen that Lullaby for a Princess animation? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. I mean, all right. I'm not gonna diss the animators for all their hard work, but I'm not. I don't. That, I think that's a bit hyperbolic to say that they're Emmy award-winning yeah. pieces of art. 
no. because there's more to be getting an enemy than just like having good work or a good piece of art in there. There's a lot of politics that go into that type of True stuff. That. Yeah, look, look, the reason, the only reason why they were not considered for uh, for uh, awards is because it doesn't belong to them. It's not their IP. But if they if they if they could if they could clear it, they they they, they very well could. I have seen so many animations getting nominated for an Oscar when they really didn't deserve it. Well, Jim, like, I, I think that's a bit on the extreme what? side of things where a, our fandom could have done that. But our that's... fandom is getting out of control when it comes to the creativity, man. Let's okay. I also want to take us a step back, and I also want to remind us that there's a lot of really bad stuff in our fandom. Oh, in terms of... oh dude, like every other fandom. But if you I only know. focus on the bad things, it's as I'm bad not... as if you only focus on the good things. Yeah, but I just wanted to take. I just wanted to like bring us back to reality for a second. In that, I mean, yes, with every fandom, there's good and bad things. Our particular yeah. fandom has the particular advantage of slightly more good things than bad things, and. I just wanted to say that mm. we we cannot just like overhype the good things when bad things ex- exist. Yes, That's, of course just... you can. Yes, you can. you totally can overhype the good things. You have to be proud about the good parts of a fandom as long as oh. you acknowledge the bad parts. By the way, what you said about the good parts over over the uh, like overbalancing the bad parts, I don't think so. I think they are very much fifty fifty. Yeah, I'd say only a slight like fifty one out of forty nine percent type. Mm, but okay, I'm gonna give you that one, but. I rather talk about the good things in here. We're, we're 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 talking about how this fandom has managed to survive all that all this time. It's definitely not because of the bad parts of a fandom. Of, yeah, I got you. True, but I mean, we're talking about bad part. It's like okay, we have our fandom drama. If we want to read more oh. about it, there's horse news. There, there's a new site. No, you know, for... you know what? Derpy Gate, Las Pegasus Unicorn. We can yeah. keep going. It's yeah, just, I mean... it, they, of course, we have bad things. Every fandom has bad things. And by the way, any of that, any of that, it's nothing compared to other drama storms that have happened in other fandoms. But anyway, we reach. Let's just say we reach to the long. So I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. Fine. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. And you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. Sweetie Bot will bang her head on the controller. <laughs> you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about stuff. Currently, I got no idea. James, what about you, man? You know who I am. You know what I do. Go to my websites. And now you're uh, gonna go on Twitter and say, "I can't believe this guy said Sonic Journey was good." Uh. <laughs> I don't go to Twitter. I usually mop on Skype and piss off my friends until they stop talking to me. I'm lonely. Oh. Please don't help. <laughs> what about you, bro? You can find me on Twitter at religious underscore art, where I retweet a bunch of web comics from amazing artists all across the world. And my DA gallery, religious at divino.com, where we're celebrating Inktoberfest. <laughs> Yay! What's that about? We ink. Like there's no tomorrow. Well, I do that on a daily basis, but this time it's special. You're a oh. kid, you're a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a Get kid. Get out! You're a... <laughs> Get out! We don't talk about that! Uh. Just we, like we don't talk about another few things that we don't talk about. Uh, oh, come on, man. But... That was that was harmless. Yeah. No, that it's works. not. Uh, I'm listening. Well, come, I'm upset. Come, Go! Come. Come Somewhere on, bro. Let it. Come on, bro. Let it soak it in. Let it soak it in, man. That <laughs> sounded so wrong in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> but Mark, what about you, man? Where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on my Tumblr, and uh, and that's probably about it, because I still don't have a Twitter. Unless if people uh, beg for it, I'm still probably not gonna make it. All righty then. I'll just put the stuff that you have in the show notes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Station Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVilleLife.com. Links are in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been really off-centered and confused during this whole episode. I'm Relicious, Ryan is Delicious. And I've been going on tangents during this uh, podcast. Dude, I like it. Come next time, please. This was fun. (laughs) Will do. Uh, And we'll see you next week with another... Slightly more or less tangenty show. Bro, this is what up. happens when nothing happens in this fandom, you see? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening, and we will see you beautiful sons of guns again next time. Bye bye.